Howdy, howdy. How is everyone doing this evening? Welcome. And thank you for joining me. Come in, come in. Please come in so that we can have a fun time tonight. It is Sunday evening. It is the beginning of November and I have a headache, but that's okay. I'm here with y'all and that's all that matters. <laughs> Welcome. I'm Eve with the Baby's Booty and we have a group on Facebook. So if you're interested in joining us on Facebook, check us out. It's Facebook, um, the Hoop Group, or it's under the Baby's Booty. Either way, I bring that up because in our group, we had several folks posting about a new machine. Whatever could that mean? It means it is fail time. So if you're new to this channel, welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Um, here on this channel, we celebrate the new babies that come about uh, when folks purchase new equipment for their businesses, because that's a really big deal if you stop and think about it, to invest in your own business or to invest in just yourself. If you do crafting um, because you just want to have fun and enjoy crafting, well, that's a celebration as well, because our purchases usually are not super inexpensive. So we celebrate with you because a lot of times when you get those packages in the mail, there really isn't too many people around that can share that same joy. So we celebrate. So let us know if you got a new baby, not that you ordered one, but that you received one so that we can celebrate with you and ring the bell. Also, there is a group, membership group available right here on our website, thebabiesbooty.com. So if you click there and click on join memberships or whatever it is up at the top of the page, you can join up for free and uh, get access to posts and a lot of the latest things that are going on with folks because either if you're on Facebook or if you're on the website, either way, um, you can share pictures of the designs and the projects that you're working on. And I know with the upcoming celebrations, there will be a lot of projects coming up. So we're excited to see what all you are working on. But the big to do as well is here on YouTube, there is a opportunity that you can join and be a member here on YouTube. And the membership here um, is a subscription-based membership, which allows us to finance a lot of the projects that we're working on and several of the giveaways and things that we do in our group. So a really cool feature of joining up as a member here on YouTube is you will, if you request it, get a bell yourself. So you will get an, a signed, numbered, and decaled bell that you can ring along with us and celebrate at home too and drive your family crazy. Isn't that awesome? That's just the coolest thing ever. So if you want to, you can join here. There's a link in the description below and I'll also post the link in the chat where you can just click it. You can join membership no matter what level subscription you choose. Just shoot me an email afterwards at thebabiesbooty at gmail.com and request your bill. I'll need your name and your address and your YouTube username and we'll ship it right out. So without any further delays, uh, we like to acknowledge the folks that come in and comment for the first little bit of the show um, so that you can know we wouldn't have this channel if it were not for you beautiful people who take the time to join us every week, which I really, really, truly appreciate. And so many of y'all are regulars. I love it. It's just like, oh, it's so cool. But at any rate, Jamila Little Little was first in the house and I want to say hi to you. <laughs> Miss Debbie Kidd, welcome. American Eagle Embroidery and Graphics. And thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. I appreciate it. Miss Phenomenal Creations. Hello, Andrea Ross. Thank you very much for being a YouTube Hoop Group captain, actually. Miss Presha, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Tan Yu is another Hoop Group captain. Thank you very much for your support of the channel and welcome. Thank you for joining us as well this evening. Nicole Breeze. Hey, dear. How are you? Kathleen Holland from Utah. Welcome. Nina Walk. Welcome. Rosemary Rowan. Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Shirley Stewart. Thank you so very much. And thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member and captain as well. Heather Butler, thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member, my dear. 
Keisha Jackson from Mississippi. Welcome. Treasure Designs from Columbus. Welcome. Thank you. And thank you for joining the class. Um, that was a lot of fun. I definitely enjoyed the classes. I learned a lot and I'm super excited for what's to come. Lori from Canada. Hello, my dear. How are you? Welcome. Charlene Mitchell, Margot Chromatier McClure, Lisa Wilder, K and K. Welcome. Thank you for being a first timer and thank you the rest of you for joining us this evening. Kathleen Holland says it must be warm only here in the house, my dear. Well, no, 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 no. I'm wrong. It was in the upper 70s today, and from what I understand, it was supposed to have been the rest of this week, but there's like the tropical whatever is going to come through some point in time, which probably is why I have a headache, um, but it's been unseasonably warm. Normally, we're in like mid-60s, but we've been in the mid-70s, so yeah, it's warm. Heather from Queensland, welcome. Thanks for joining us, y'all. Patricia Garza, welcome, my dear Leticia Hammond. Welcome. Thank you for joining us and thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Eartha Lewis, welcome. Afro Columbia, thank you. I appreciate that. And welcome this evening. Mary Brown, welcome. Um, Miss Phenomenal Creations says she got a 15 needle two months ago. I <laughs> never posted because she's trying to learn it. <laughs> I'm not even mad at you, dear. I totally get it. But guess what? You still going to get your bell rang. I ain't going to hold that against you because I knew you was going to have it. You could have said something two months ago. We would have known you had it, girl. We got you. Uh, we got you. <laughs> but at any rate, let's ring the bell for your awesome 15 needle Miss Phenomenal Creations. Congratulations. <laughs> Y'all. 15 needles in the house. Holler! 15 needles back, 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 back there too. <laughs> Gotta figure out what directional in the camera. That's crazy. Shayna Krause, you're here. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. And yes, we're going to be learning about applique tonight. Miss 143, hello. How are you? Welcome. And thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Uh oh, Leticia says she got her new red line mini holler. Let's ring the bell for you too. 12 needles. <laughs> yes, red line in the house. Holler. Thank you for letting us know and congratulations to you and to the both of you. Please be sure to post pictures of the projects that you're working on with those multi needles. We will be working on the multi needle tonight. Doing some applique, y'all. Elsie Thomas, good evening to you as well. Welcome. Debbie says something happened on Facebook and I'm, oh no. Okay, we'll definitely fix that. Don't know what happened. Um, matter of fact, because it took my picture down from the top. So I'm gonna have to check and make sure my password and all that stuff is cool. Veronica Morgan, welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Leela Nelson, hey my dear, welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening and thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member as well. Laura, hello, how are, Nora, sorry, how are you? Welcome, thank you for joining us. Diane, good evening to you as well. Crazy Battlefield Gaming, yas, welcome from South Carolina. Thank you for joining us this evening. All things personalized, hello to you as well. We got Miss Debbie D in the house. Hi, Debbie D. <laughs> welcome and thank you as well for being a YouTube Hoop Group captain. Colette, welcome. Thank you as well for being a YouTube Hoop Group captain. Ray Fallow, welcome and thank you for joining us from Alabama. I'm not going to aggravate my husband tonight. <laughs> Miss Presha, welcome. Yes, you have. Thank you for joining us this evening. Patrina says, how are you tonight? I am doing okay. Uh, I have a bad headache, but it's going to be all right. Otherwise, I'm doing great. KK Simmons says, may you please do a video on hooping for a genome? Um, well, what I can do is a video on hooping, but hooping for genome, brother, redline, all of them are pretty much about the same. So hooping is a technique, um, not a difficult technique by any stretch, but you do have to learn what to look for and how to get your hooping down. So We'll see about um, trying to get something put together to show you how to hoop, okay? 
Um, let, let's see, Boracua Sewing and Crafts. Good evening to you as well. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Miss Ethel Smith. Hello, hello. Good evening to you as well. And thank you very much for being a YouTube Who Group captain as well. Kingsbury's Crafts. Hello, how are you? Rhonda the Writer. Hi, dear. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening and thank you for being a YouTube Who Group member. Sundoras, hello, how are you? Suzanne Go, Grand Go from the Space Coast. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Candy from New York. Hey, dear, how are you? Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Rhonda, yes, I am glad you made it as well. Jan Damar from Atlanta, the ATL. Welcome. Custom Thing Studios from Wilmington, Delaware. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, so, so on. Hello, how are you? Welcome. Pearl Lucas. Hey, my dear. Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Let's see. Bella Daisy 24. You finally, she says, I finally, <laughs> finally purchased a six needle. Well, guess what? We gonna ring the bell for you. Wait a minute. What's your six needle? Did you get the, um, baby lock? Did you get the brother? What six needle did you get? Let us know, girl, so we can ring properly. <laughs> Um, Nora says she's trying to be regular. That's all right. We appreciate you being here with us on the regular. Rhonda says you invested in new digitizing software. What'd you get, girl? We're going to ring for that, too, because digitizing software is not cheap at all. It really isn't. Karen Murray from Canada. Hello, my dear. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Isabel Morgan Catlett. Good evening to you as well. Norma Lazaro, hello, EJ's daughter, hello, how are you? Miss D. Purplewood, hey, dear, Janet McKinney, hey, Janet McKinney, how are you? Welcome, thank you for joining us, Miss Janet is my awesomest friend. Hi, Vu, hello, how are you? Bella Daisy says she got the brother 670E, congratulations on your six needle brother machine. <laughs> Congratulations. Hopefully everybody in here is ringing their bells. They ordered one. So we can ring together. Rhonda the writer. You got Wilcom Hatch. Girl, that is an investment. Congratulations. Hope you're doing good with it, girl. <laughs> Y'all, digitizing in the house. <laughs> Congratulations. That is awesome, Rhonda. That uh, Wilcom is a beast. And so I'm looking forward to seeing the digitizing work that you're going to accomplish with it. Shayna Krause says the month badges by the people's name is, is very attractive. It is, girl. It is. I tried real hard to design something super cute for that. <laughs> Janet says it's raining cats and dogs in Florida. Oh, no. Be safe. Be careful. And stay dry. All right, you guys. So I have a bit of an announcement and I was kind of sort of trying to wait until more folks was in here with us but I just I just can't y'all one of my biggest problems in life is I cannot hold on to a secret to save my life I just can't I don't know why I don't know what it is it's like I'm so excited and ready to just burst and tell people my secret so I got a secret for y'all but first before we get into that, I want to get into what we're doing tonight. Lachelle, more hello to you as well, my dear. So tonight, I didn't finish. Uh, I was trying to finish getting the machine set up over there behind me so that we can do some applique tonight because that was requested a few weeks ago that we do some applique. Um, and I was in the middle of trying to make sure everything was just so on the embroidery machine and looked over and it was like 901. Lord Jesus. So please forgive me for being a bit tardy. But the machine is set up. I'm super excited about that because we are uh, going to watch our embroidery machine stitch out some applique. And then we are going to take the time to uh, show you how to actually do the applique, what we need to be successful with applique, the tools. Um, I will be adding links in the chat and making sure that the links are live in the description as well for the tools that we need for applique. And all of this really has to go hand in hand with what I have 
sitting on the tip of my tongue. So first off, though, I want to know, how is everyone doing this evening? What have you been working on lately in your studios? Have you been doing applique lately? If you've been doing applique, say applique. If you need help with applique, say help with applique. Let me know. Which one is it? Because I'm super excited to go over this applique stuff tonight. I really am. Meanwhile, I am going to come back over her. Yeah, appliques. <laughs> Eight Reese Creations. Hilarious. You've been doing app. Oh, y'all been doing applique. That's what's up. Applique is fun. Uh, how do you make sure that this 670 recognizes the mighty hoop? And doesn't hit the edge of the hoop. Um, well, hey Nina Smith, how are you? Welcome. Um, with the 670E, what I generally do is um set the boundaries. One well, not set the boundaries. So you put the hoop on, the mighty hoop. And I pick the biggest size hoop that there is for the embroidery machine. Make sure the arm is set for the biggest size. And when you load in your design, there is, when you go to set up your design and where you can move where the design sits on the hoop before you send it to be stitched, before you press the button to go into the stitch um, screen, you'll go into the setup screen. The setup screen is first after you load the design. So in that setup screen, there's a button down at the bottom. If you press it, it will take you to where the design, as tall as it'll go, and as low as it'll go, and as far to the right as it'll go, far to the left as it'll go, diagonals, and the other diag opposite diagonals. All of that is in that little box. So what I tend to do is I'll check that. So if I press it and it goes well beyond at the top, and then I press it and check it and it goes well beyond at the bottom. Then I know it's too big for whatever mighty hoop or fast frame or whatever it is that I have on the machine. So I need to either get a bigger frame or get a smaller design. Um, so that's pretty much how I set up that machine. You just have to test and see where it is. Now, if you, if you um, send it to the very top of where the design is going to be and it's outside the frame, and then you send it to the very bottom of where the design is supposed to be, and it's not beyond the bottom of the frame, and you look like you have some wiggle room, just move it down. Press the down button to move the design down and see if you can't get it to fit inside that frame. But I will give you a word of strong advice. When you move it to the very top of where the design is going to be, pull that needle bar down as if, you know, don't t use the turn wheel. Just take your finger and pull that presser foot down and see where it's going to hit on that frame because it it can look like it's inside the boundary of the frame. But when you pull that presser foot down, you'll see it's actually going to hit the frame. And that's not good either. So that's pretty much how I trace and make sure that everything's good um, with how getting that design in those mighty hoops or any other aftermarket frame other than the standard ones that come with the machine. Your brother tells you what size hoops you can use if the design is too big, it will not load. Right, It that's correct for if you, like for instance, what she's asking is, um, let's get it off. So for instance, this is a mighty hoop, okay? <clears throat> and this mighty hoop, can be used on my brother's six needle machine. It has the brackets that will let it be used on the six needle machine. Well, in order to use this uh, Mighty Hoop, I have to set my brother embroidery machine to the largest size hoop that it will take because this is aftermarket. And in order for it to fit, they use aftermarket size brackets, which is the largest size, even though this is my embroidery field here. So it's tricking the machine to let me go to the largest parameters of the machine so that I can use what I want with this. Well, that being the case, yes, I can use a um, four by four design or I can even load a five by seven design, but this is not a five by seven hoop. So what she's asking is she wants to use 
um, say for instance, this is a four and a half inch design that she has. Well, a four and a half inch design will work on the larger size hoop on the brother machine, but the brother machine doesn't know that this is the size hoop that I'm putting on the machine. It thinks I'm using the biggest hoop. So she's just wanting to, to learn how to make sure that she can use her four and a half size design with this frame because this is a five and a half square. So she can use four and a half, but if it's not in the parameters of this hoop, then it's going to hit the frame because the machine thinks it's a bigger hoop that's on the machine. So she's just asking to try and keep from tearing up her machine and the needle and stuff. So that's what she's asking for. Um, but yes, it can be done. Um, let me know if that made sense. Um, and we'll see if I can explain it a little bit better if it didn't. Um, I see a lot of folks that is saying help with applique. Oh my goodness. Y'all, and Phil Stitches so so on and says, y'all, applique. There's a lot of folks doing applique though. That's what's up. You made your first patch. Someone said, Sunny O'Neill, you made your first patch. Congratulations, my dear. That's Yes. Patches are cool. Applique from start to finish. Applique, brother, to see. Good tip. You're welcome. Hi, Kimberly from Montana. You're welcome. Nora says, help. Leela on the red line. I get the red flashing circle and the design doesn't show up if the design is too big. That would be correct as well, unless you don't have the correct hoop size showing. Like with mine, I'll use the biggest size hoop in most instances. Actually, on, on the red line, I use the biggest size hoop for everything. It doesn't matter what size hoop I put on the machine um, because I don't want any restrictions. So it all boils down to using the design parameters that are built into any machine. doesn't matter. Even the little 4 by 4s do the exact same thing. They'll show you where the borders are for the design to make sure that you don't go outside of those parameters and tear up your machine. Help, help, help. Nina says, done several towels, still working on learning placement. Yas. Okay, so you guys, Tanya, we got you, girl. So are you ready for what I have to tell y'all? If you're nosy and you've been on my website, you already know and probably don't realize it. <laughs> but... I have opened up an applique class. So I have an applique. It's called applique payday. If I'm remembering correctly, I'm trying to make sure I'm remembering the name right because I'm I played with several ideas of names of how to make it. I'm sorry, applique power play. That's what it is. We have an applique power play coming up, not payday. I did think of payday because. But the reason I didn't stick with payday is because not everybody does applique for profit. Not everybody has a business. So for those who are interested in learning applique, now this is not just your basic applique. This is not your basic applique, applique class at all. This is going to be a higher level applique class because not only will, like tonight, we're just doing basic applique. One applique, one layer nothing fancy to it it's just a simple applique design and that's it so this is basically going to be a teaser tonight applique project that we're working on but in the class we're going to just take applique all the way to every extreme i could think of to show you just how awesome applique is and how easy it is no matter what you're doing you can be powerful in your applique. So that class is opened up and the first 50 people that join the class, that buy a ticket to the class, the first 50 people you get a free applique design. You get free applique design. So I'm super, super, super excited about that. And that's my announcement for tonight. Um, now, as far as the follow-up on So What Pro, the So What Pro Ninja series, we're going to be cut, cutting and scratching and chopping and everything that is coming up that's still 
in the works as far as scheduling that. Um, mainly because I'm enlisting some assistance with that class because there's one feature that I'm thinking about turning over to. Well, we'll get into that later. <laughs> we'll get into that later. But for right now, we do have an applicate class open up on our website. It's thebabiesbooty.com slash events. Yes! Bet you didn't see that coming. Bet you didn't see that coming. Let me see if I can turn that on because I do have. Is that it? Nope, that ain't it. That it? Nope, that ain't it either. Ah! Oh my God. Nope, that ain't it either. I'm trying to get it where y'all can see the what's the face what is it called oh here it is yes boom i don't think you have to have the dash one on there though so i kind of really need to fix that but um that way you can um go in and get your tickets you can get your ticket and this class is not limited it's not going to be a small class because there's only one class one, maybe two, maybe two. If I can squeeze it in, if I do a second one, it'll be after the 1st of December. But for right now, there's one opportunity to take this webinar. And it's a webinar. It's not going to be like the So What Pro classes either. So the So What Pro classes, folks was in with their videos and all that stuff. This is a webinar and it will be live and you will be able to watch and follow along. And if you are one of the first 50 you can follow along with the design that i will be using so super excited yes. all right so getting back to the applique that we're going to work on today i don't know what that oh that's my dog outside so getting to the applique that we're working on today it's a super super simple design but it's very cute all right um what you definitely will need, I'm trying to get back to, where are we? We're right there. Avery's Creations, welcome to the Hoop Group. Holla! Yay! <laughs> Yay! Welcome, Avery's Creations. Thank you for joining us at the Captain. OMG, welcome, welcome, welcome. Will you be integrating the cutting machine Cricut Scan and Cut? I will. I will. I will be integrating the machine and I was torn on um, whether to pull out the silhouette to um, silhouette as well is what I meant to say. Um, but I have Cricut, I have the scanning cut, and I also have the silhouette. So I'm torn on that. The class is 40 to 45 minutes, um, but of course it could go a little bit longer. Um, depending upon questions that are asked in the class. Um, hello from Maryland. Is there an adhesive I can use for patches other than heat and bond? Yes, there is actually a patch glue that you can purchase. Um, where you can purchase it from, I'll have to do a little bit of research real quick um, because I'm not sure if they offer that at all stitch or not, but there is a patch glue that looks just like Elmer's, Elmer's glue that you can put on the back of patches and let it dry. And then a person can take it and keep pressing on if they want to. Teresa Jackson, I'm okay. How are you? Welcome. Welcome. Christine Jones, welcome. You're waiting on your machine. Girl, when it gets there, you holler so we can ring that bell for you. Let me know. Let me know. Hey, Miss Social Deb. Hello, Marianne Reddick. How are you? Sheila Cushion. Hi, Sheila Cushionberry. <laughs> we are doing okay. We are definitely doing okay. Um... You want to embroider toddler knee socks? Where can you find a hoop small enough for socks? Forever blessed asked. Um, so there is, think, 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 think. There is a, a contraption. Where is it? There is a contraption that you can purchase. Um, no, I don't think it's in there. You can purchase a little 
adapter and I think it's in my Amazon storefront. Let me look and see if it's there. Um, but there's a contraption that you can do use that will allow you to use a regular hoop. Um, and you can embroider on socks. No matter what size, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, oop, that's not what I want. Um, lists. Oh, here we go. Is that the right list? Oh, yeah, here we go. Um, what I say? Well, it used to be in my uh, thingy, my Bobby. My uh, Amazon store. I think. Let me not lie. I'm not be sure. Uh, yep, it sure is. It sure is. So, if you are on, um, let me see. My storefront is listed. What is it? Let's put the storefront in the chat. It is an affiliate link to the storefront. But if you go under, where was I? Embroidery tools. Embroidery tools. You will find the little contraption I'm talking about. Um, it's called the Sock Two Sock Easy Embroidery Machine Hooping Aid. So you can just slide the little sock on there and put it on any size hoop and you will be able to embroider on socks easier. I have it. Ooh, since I moved and set up in the new studio, I haven't pulled it out. So I don't know where it is. I'm sorry. But you'll find a lot of cool little knickknacks and whatnot in my shop, uh, my YouTube, mm, Amazon shop, uh, which is an affiliate link. And let me, whoop, yas. And then under embroidery supplies, you'll be able to find these beautiful babies right here, which we will need for doing our applique project. Why? Why is this so um, important? Why, why does it matter that we have a duck bill and that we have this angle here? Well, it makes it a lot easier to get down in and get close to your embroidery stitches. One of the biggest complaints people have is that they can't cut the stitches close enough when they're doing the embroidery. And so the uh, edges show up on the outside of the applique satin stitching. Well, in the class, we'll go over some things to look for when doing applique and why that would be a problem and how you can resolve that problem. So that will be in the class. Um, but these scissors are a definite plus to help with doing applique. And as I mentioned, these are in the Amazon storefront if you want to get them from Amazon or they are available at allstitch.com as well. So allstitch.com does sell applique scissors. And in a pinch, in a pinch, even if I can't get super, super close, I also use my little nipper scissors. Sometimes, like, I'll have a pair that I can use with fabric and use it to get down in there. But generally, I use this to trim stitches and jump stitches and stuff. And I try not to use this to cut fabric. But it has come through in a pinch when this was just a little bit too big because some folks' applique projects are, like, very detailed. And that being the case, you might have to get into some extremely teeny nooks and crannies. And that's where these come in and help. So, yes, Walk by Faith says she has the applique scissors and uses them. Pamela Smith, the applique class is not free at this time. It is not. I am sorry. I am sorry. Now, I thought I saw a question. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Mm -mm. That is our question. I'm going back and checking the chat. Um, let's see. Gail McNair, hello. How are you? Welcome. Welcome. Kimberly Armstrong, my issue with applique is after it is completed and I put tender touch on the back using my heat press. The applique fabric has bumps. We'll help you with that too, my dear. We sure will. 
the class covers that too. It sure does. Because there's so many techniques out there that a lot of different people use. But my favorites are the ones that we'll be going over. Now, I'll touch on some of the others. But the ones that I know are tried and true and I have yet to have issues out of them, those are the ones that we'll be going over. Hey, Jennifer H. and Leah Smodello. Hello, how are y'all doing? Hello, Eve Mar. How are you? Welcome and thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. And for those of you in here who are captains, actually, I need to address something with you guys. I have files that I need to send to you all, but I found a way to make my life so much easier with trying to keep up with your email addresses and such. So on our website, thebabiesbooty.com, if you're not a member yet, please go ahead and join with your email address and put your um, name for me. Um, and that way I can make sure that it, your membership in the Baby's Booty Hoop Group on our website is marked as a captain. Um, so that when I do special webinars and special videos, you will have access to them on my website. So we'll be setting that up soon as well. Super, 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 super excited. Oh my God, things are coming together and it's just amazing. Um, let's see, Susan Currens. Hello, welcome and thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. I appreciate you joining us from Ontario. <laughs> Um, Christine Jones, welcome. Thank you. Oh, I already told you because you're getting your machine coming. I'm super excited for you. That is so cool. Which machine are you getting, Miss Christine? I'd love to know. Um, Alice Rigby, welcome. Nikomi Butler, welcome. Mr. So and so, welcome. Debbie Bond, Google Cookie Gainer. She has the sock thing. That's cool. The applique class will be on my website, um, and it is a webinar on my website. Andrea Baxter, hello, my dear. How are you? Welcome. Um, can you give a link for your device for ripping embroidery stitches? Are you talking about this absolutely beautiful thing right here, this Peggy Stitch Eraser, which has saved my life, I don't know how many times save my wallet more times than I can count. This thing has paid for itself probably about 25 times over. And that's kind of embarrassing because that means I've screwed up 25 times. But that's okay because we all screw up at some point in time in our embroidery lives. Love this thing. This thing is amazing. Um, You work Saturday evenings. Hey! No, that's why I said I'm thinking about doing one more, but we'll have to see because it's kind of hard to schedule around everybody's schedule. And that's what makes it different, difficult. But the classes, the, the webinar will be recorded. So if you wanted to, you could watch the webinar at a later time. And if you purchase a ticket, you will have access to it. Hello, Robin White. How are you? Um, Alice, if you're talking about this, I'll go ahead and post the link to this. Applique scissors, so I'm ready, y'all. Ah. Okay, let me know, Alice, if this is yes. Okay, cool. Um, let me go here and I'll post that real quick so that we can get to our applique. I need to streamline my um store just it is now this one is um this one is cordless some folks don't care for the cordless but if you you know click through because it'll show other options down towards the bottom like other people have purchased or what have you you can probably find the one that's corded, but it's entirely up to you. Funny thing is, I've used this with it plugged in. It doesn't have to be cordless, so you it's still technically a corded piece of equipment if you really want to be technical about it. Um, uh, yes, I can, Miss Shirley Stewart. Um, let's make go, y'all. 
and pull it up and then boom just like that okay there you are there is the link to the applique power play it starts uh, it, oh, I already said it's going to be online. You're welcome, Leah. Um, and the applique power play is going to be on the 21st, which is a Saturday, if I remember correctly. Yes, 21st is a Saturday. It's going to be at 8 p.m. to 9.40 p.m. I tried to get, like, middle of the ground for the folks on the East Coast and the folks on the West Coast. I'm trying, y'all. It's just the scheduling thing is crazy. So... That was what I decided to go with at this time. And like I said, if we do a second class, um, then we'll pick a different day. Thank you, Pamela Smith. I appreciate you saying that. I really, really do. Pamela says, like, how thorough you are and go through everything real clearly. I try because I'm... Y'all myself I treat people the way I want to be treated and for me I need details and I'm very curious like if someone's like okay well this is how you do it and you have to do it this way I want to know why do I have to do it that way is there another option um is you know what I'm saying I'm just I like to know think backgrounds to things and reasons why so I try to do that as well Cindy McPeck says she bought a Brother SC400 as a starter embroidery machine. Nothing wrong with that. It's an awesome little machine. I was watching one of your older tutorials on stabilizers. I'm not able to find the list. Um, The list for what, what you're looking for, my dear. Is it a video you're looking for or the stabilizers that you're looking for? List of stabilizers. Sorry. I read on down and saw it. Okay. So I have them on that same link that I just posted on, for Amazon, for the Amazon store. The stabilizers are listed in there that I use with my 4x4 machine. You're welcome, Deborah. She got her, Deborah, sorry, you got your um, bell. Congratulations, dear. Y'all. And welcome. Thank you for being a YouTube Hoop group member. I appreciate that. Hello, Valerie Hill. How are you? River City Creative. Hey, how are you? Tracy Middlebrook, welcome. If I haven't said that already. Christine Jones says she's getting that 625. I'm not mad, girl. I'm not mad at all. Um, Avery Head, I put the link below. It would be cool. And Pamela Smith, we are working on that. That's a secret between me and you, girl. We working on that. So if they didn't see it in chat, they don't know what I'm talking about. Um, can we enroll now into the So What Pro class? Lori Campbell, the So What, so what Pro class has ended the live versions, but we will have a webinar version um, pre-recorded that will be available coming up here shortly. Tina Daniels, what thread is better, polyester or rayon? There's no better thread with that, um, Tina. So if it, it just needs to be embroidery thread, first and foremost. But the difference with polyester versus rayon is the luster, okay? So polyester is more of a shine. It has more of a, a, like, super shiny embroidery look to it, whereas rayon has this rich luster to it I, I really that's the only way I really can explain it rayon is a beautiful embroidery thread to use um but it's usually a little more pricey because of course the poly neon is polyester so it's a lot less expensive but that rayon is a gorgeous thread to use so is there's no better or worse when it comes to those two it's just how you want your embroidery to turn out, how you want it to look. Um, so the more upscale, maybe, and that's kind of the wrong word to use because you can use poly neon or the polyester embroidery thread and it'll still look excellent. 
Um, but it's just something about that rayon. It has a warmer look to it. So it, it, I'd give it a shot and see how it looks, especially if it's a design with just one color and it's filled in, you know, not like lines. I, if it's a nice fill in, girl, try that rayon. It's really pretty. Um, a couple of more questions and then we'll get started on the applique. Uh, where did I just see that? Hello, Aaron L. Nakomi says, how do you put a whole name or even initials from a downloaded all in one? My machine makes me add them one by one and then I have to move them around to place them. I'm confused. Nakomi, you would benefit from using embroidery software. Um, embroidery editing software will help you tremendously. So you open up the program um, and once you get into the program, you can bring in letters one by one or if you have a editor letter editor that you can put them in with um and then you can arrange the name however you want now the embroidery editing software program that i suggest to everyone because it was just the answer to prayers when i first started is so what pro um and it's still the powerhouse embroidery editing program that competes with the others that are out there um, so I have a demo version that you can download on my website, um, thebabiesbooty.com, just at the top, click Sew It Pro, and it should pull up for you, and you'll be able to, um, download the demo version. Now, if you have a Macintosh, um, computer, then you have to use a Windows emulator. I have no earthly clue how that works, so I can't really walk you through that part of it, um, uh, but from what I understand, people who have Macintoshes or, uh, Apple computers or whatever they're called now. I don't even know. I'm so behind in times, but with that part of it, but the folks who have though that brand already know about Windows emulators and whatnot and having to use those. So, but it's there and it's on um, the website. You can download the demo for it. Can you make a patch with any embroidery design? Um... Allison, that's a tricky question. Under normal circumstances, there are specific designs made for patches, specific designs. But if an embroidery design is made a certain way, it can be used for a patch. And I know that's very confusing, but once we do our project tonight, I'll show you what I mean. I'll show you what I mean. Um, Aaron L., you really didn't miss too much, but that we're going to be doing some applique here in a moment. Avery getting her Rowenta cordless iron huffler. Miss Ethel Smith is in the class. Class, y'all, I'm excited. If I do not have a color in rayon, I use polyester instead. Heather says, Shirley Stewart is signed up. Will there be a pre-recorded version of the applique? Yes, Sheila Cushenberry. It will be recorded. Does it have to say embroidery thread? You should make sure it says embroidery thread just to protect the health of your embroidery machine. I do have a video on embroidery threads and all of that jazz. And what what the video will show is usually up close under microscope sometimes, but sometimes you can see with the naked eye, threads that are not made for embroidery have extra fuzz on them. So what happens is because the embroidery machine is going so fast and going in so many stitches and stitches on top of each other, see like a regular sewing machine generally sews in a straight line or a regular row of stitches. So even if a regular sewing machine is going a million miles an hour, it's still going straight. So the stitches generally are just rubbing against the fabric, but with embroidery, your stitches or your needle and that thread going up and down are rubbing up against other thread. It's rubbing up against the stabilizer. It's rubbing up against the fabric that you're embroidering on. So it sheds those fibers off of the thread way worse. Whereas embroidery thread is um, made to not shed like that. And it won't pile up all that extra lint inside of your embroidery machine. And if you don't clean it out regularly um, and you're using those 
other threads that shed a lot, you'll have lint buildup, which can cause a fire in your embroidery machine. And I'm sure you don't want that. So, or damage to the machine. Lint has been known to cake up and break machines as well and cause you problem with your embroidery. So it's best to use embroidery thread. <laughs> Very much best. Uh, best. Rayon bleeds after washing. Debbie Bond, the Madeira hasn't bled for me yet. So it could possibly be the brand, but be careful then for whomever wants to use rayon. It might bleed on you, so just be careful. Um, Carmen says it's 50 degrees cold. Welcome. Thank you for joining us, and thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Linda Smith, welcome. Thank you for joining us from Dayton. So let's go ahead and get in with Gail. Yes, it is fully compatible with Max, but it is more expensive about little little roughly about double the price of solar pro miss pressure uh no worries and hello charmaine a welcome and thank you for being a youtube hoop group member thank you for joining us so you guys let's get into our um get into our um i will have to let you know when that will be available walk by faith because i actually have to uh, record that video. I'm not going to use one of the ones where we've had the class already. I'm going to record a new one. Excited about that. So with the um, applique that we're doing tonight, it's super, super simple. Let me go and see if I can't show you what it is. It's actually super cute, y'all. I'm just like, really excited to do um, let's see um, do, 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 do. this is I'm so used to using zoom that I'm thinking I can screen share and I can't all right it's not going to let me so what I'm going to do is do this, or do this, and then do this so that I can show you. All right. So being I cannot show you my can't show you my screen right now. So I'm just going to have to show you a picture. Yay! All right. So here is the design that we're going to do today. It's super simple. Super, 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 super simple. And as you see, we have our cloud, which the cloud is going to be the applique. And we have some cutie little stars hanging from there. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight color stops that we'll be going through on the embroidery machine. The first color stop is going to be the little lines coming down from the clouds that are holding the stars. Um, and then the second, third, and fourth color stops are the actual applique process. All right. So what we're going to do is um, go ahead and get started with the applique process, not the applique process, but the design, and then we'll get started on the applique process. All right, so let's switch it over to the webcam, and we're going to do our applique on this black fabric so that it'll be a little easier for you guys to see. Um, and our applique is just pretty much going to be this basic white fabric, nothing fancy, um, is going to comprise our cloud. Um, and I'm just going to let whatever colors decide to stitch 
um, stitch for our stars that are hanging down below. All right, so let us get to going. And once I get over to the um, embroidery machine, I won't be able to see the chat. So you can ask your questions and I have to scroll back up and get to your questions later. All right, so let's see. Oh, my one. All right, so let's get you going over here. And it's already loaded in the embroidery machine, so I'm just gonna hit start so that it can start with the first color. And I'm gonna set the machine to manual so that it will stop after each stitch out. So it's doing, like I said, I let it do whatever color it wanted to do. So it's doing red for the drop. For the line for our star. And I didn't set the machine up to continue to go ahead and stitch. I should have, but I didn't. So I keep stopping. Right, so it's done the drops for the stars. So now it's ready to start the applique process. Now with applique, the first thing it's going to do is stitch what's called a placement stitch. So that's, that placement stitch is to basically show you where to lay down your fabric for the applique to make sure that you're covering all of the lines. So let's tell it to go ahead and do that. And so we see that our cloud comes. Let me take this off. We can see it better. So our cloud is here, and this part is what's going to be applique. So the applique, the whole one of the purposes of applique is to fill this in. So that we're not doing a whole bunch of stitches to fill in to make the cloud. So you can use uh, just about any kind of fabric. But in this instance, we're just going to use this um, thick polyester. And you want to be sure that whatever fabric you use, it covers all the stitches. So if I leave it like this, then it's not going to cover everything. So your stitches need to be well, your piece of fabric rather, needs to be much, much bigger than the design area for the applique. So I'm just going to let that hang off because, you know, kind of don't care. But if you want it to be 100% sure that this doesn't move while it's being tacked down, because the next step should be the tack down stitch, if I'm reading my design properly um, on Sew It Pro, the next step should be the tack down stitch. That being the case, um, you could use spray adhesive to hold this down and hold it in place, but since mine is so simple, I'm just going to let it lay here. 
And the other thing is because this fabric has a little bit of weight to it, it's not a super light fabric, I'm not worried about it wrinkling or anything like that. So I'm not adding anything to the back of this. Alright, so yes, there are things that you can add to the back of your fabric when doing applique, but that's something that we'll be covering in the class. Alright, so let's go ahead and hopefully if this if I read it correctly, the next step should be our tack down stitch. Yes, it is. We now have our tack down. As we'll discuss what to look for to determine whether or not your applique design is a great design for applique. But this design, if I'm remembering correctly, came from a really good designer. I don't ever have issues with her applique design. So that being the case, you definitely want to, um, if you are in the market to do applique and you're finding applique, mess up designs in the future. So at this point, what I'm going to do is use my applique scissors and I'm going to use this scoop on the back side to get up under this fabric to help lift it up. So that I can cut super, super close to those stitches. Now that's going to be a little difficult to do with me holding it up. But I was showing, I'm bringing it up to show you that that's pretty much what I'm doing with these scissors. So it's going to be hard to see that with it on the machine and me not moving the camera. And then how smart is it to use the magnet mighty hoop and my scissors stick to the hoop? I don't know. You know. <sighs> Some days. Some days. Alright, so. In applique, you definitely want to get as close to that tack down stitch as you can without cutting through your thread. Okay? As close as you can, but without cutting through those threads. And mine probably need to be sharpened because I have abused my applique scissors. And keep in mind, y'all, if you can't get scissors sharpened, <clears throat> there's nothing wrong with getting a new pair. Because we, we, we're rough on our scissors and cutting fabric dulls scissors. Alright, you see I'm trying to get, and I'm going to show this closer as soon as I get some more of this cut. To show how close I am. And sometimes doing um, cutting applique requires what I like to call gymnastics <clears throat> and holding your mouth right. So sometimes you, you got to take, it's better to not cut it on the machine. It's better to take it off and put it in a location where you can lay it out and twist it around and turn it so that you can get to all sides. So I'm going to see if turning this around will help it should yes it is and I can get to the other side and keep the duck bill on the underside of the fabric okay Scissors probably need to be adjusted for sharpening if they're doing okay. All right. And sometimes holding up the fabric helps too. It helps to get those duck bills under there. Alright. So here's our cloud that is cut out. Now as you'll see I got pretty close right around in here. And then now here is a little bit further away from the tack down stitch. Really close right in here and a little bit further out here. So I know this fuzz frame of the fabric is going to show 
on the applique. So I'm going to trim that back just a little bit more and I'm going to use these little detailed scissors because uh, now the fabric has been taken off and it's going to get super, super close. Well, not super close, but closer to what I'm doing. All right, so that's that. And all I'm doing is doing a little bit of trim work. Depending upon the designer, you may not have to be so very perfect, perfectly close, okay? Depending on your designer. All right, so I've cleaned it up a lot more than what it was. All right, so what we're going to do now is put it back on the machine and I'm gonna let it stitch out the rest because the very next stitch is going to be the satin stitch around our cloud, which is the final step of your applique. It does a satin stitch around the outside to cover that frayed edge. So now this cloud will be filled in with the white, and we didn't have to do a whole ton of stitch. So applique is an excellent option for like baby onesies and stuff like that, where you don't want a lot of stitches, heavy stitches on a lightweight fabric. All right, so we're going to go ahead and finish our cloud and then let the other stars stitch. show you what a lot of folks get frustrated with are the little frays. Like I showed you that fray will come through and frustrate us every time. But there are solutions for that. Um, even if you don't do a beforehand solution to help eliminate that problem, there also is an after solution that you can do if you forget to do the beforehand solution. So all of that, as I mentioned, will be discussed in the applique class. So here's our lovely cloud. It's super cute. So now we're going to go ahead and finish this design by putting on our four stars. All right. So these are the last four steps. Someone asked about where to purchase the design. This specific design, I don't remember because it was on my um, embroidery, uh, in my embroidery file, but I'm more than positive it came from Designs by Jenkins. More than positive. Now, how accurate is that? I don't know. But I'll look and see if we can't find it on there. So now let's go to, um, let's 
cake. This is our next color. Uh-oh, I saw that thread come out of there too. You got stuck right on the Oh Lord. Let me show y'all why it stopped and why it got stuck. A lot of times people are like, oh my god, my machine is giving me a problem. It's telling me this and it's telling me that. Let me show you what could be the problem. And I hate to take this off because it wasn't the easiest thing to put on. But so can you see that and how it wraps around this inner pin and how it's pulled all around the bottom so sometimes just take your spool of thread off of the machine and make sure it didn't get caught around your spool pin so sometimes that's the problem and that's what happened um, to cause you issues with your thread breaking, thread stopping, needle breaking, the whole nine. So let me get this wrapped back up and put it back on the machine and then re-thread that needle. Because vibration, the, especially if you're stitching at fast stitches per minute, the vibration will shift those spools of thread around and get the thread tangled. Now a thread net will help keep that from happening. Um, I do have some thread nets, but I don't really use them. Then I'll just definitely want to make some for me. I probably should. Alright. Threaded. And someone asked about the machine I'm using. This is a red line 15 needle. So it's the red line 1501 embroidery machine. All right, let's give her another whirl. Well, I can go back it up a little bit. Alright, and our next color we're going to go with this one. Now we'll switch and do this one right here. All right, so 
will address a couple of things that we dealt with in doing this particular design. So first and foremost, um, someone asked about the duckbill scissors. These are applique scissors. And the reason why uh, that bill is there is because this goes to the underside of the fabric, whereas the scissor clipper goes to the top and you cut around and this helps lift the fabric to help get it get to help make it easier to get up under that fabric and close to the stitch line so that you can get a somewhat of a clean cut uh, when doing your applique. Um, now I did not have this hooped completely properly first and foremost and you'll see that down here I just use a strip of fabric so that leads to puckering. Look at the puckering that's on there. And a lot of folks are like, well, it's, I don't know why it's puckering, blah, blah. It's probably not hooped properly. So when you want to avoid puckering, you want to make sure that that hoop has a good fit and hold on that fabric all the way around, no matter what hoop you're using. So make sure that it's hooped and that your stabilizer is good and tight on the back. All of that plays a factor and avoiding puckering. Um, also, we had some tension issues. A lot of that could have been because of how I had it hooped, um, but I'm more than positive I need to change needles. I haven't done that yet. So at any rate, here's our applique. Just easy peasy, mac and cheesy. So we'll go ahead and take it out of the hoop. And this is um, our applique project. Applique is just a matter of having the right tools for the job. Come on, bruh. This mighty hoop is super strong, y'all. Look at that. I'm, I'm struggling to take this off. There we go. I'm probably pushing on it the wrong way now that I think about it. Okay. All right. So here's our applique. So now, oh, and I was using a tearaway. I wasn't using a cutaway. That did not help with puckering either. You really, this is uh, cotton. This cotton really should have been cutaway fabric and we wouldn't have had as much puckering. But I was doing quick and dirty. So here's our applique project. The cloud, uh, as I mentioned, it pretty much stitches out a placement stitch to show you where to place your fabric. After you place your fabric, it does a tack down stitch. The tack down is to hold that fabric in place so that you can cut out around the border of that fabric as close as you possibly can. And then after that comes your actual applique or satin stitch that creates the applique effect and finishes it off and makes it absolutely gorgeous. So the we will be doing a more of a power packed class to go in depth with applique, showing reason, the beginnings of applique, what you can do with applique, tips and tricks with applique, tools to use for applique, the whole nine is going to be in that class. So that's going to be on the 21st of November. Um, tickets are available on our website, Sewer Pro, and there's a link in the description and in the chat, and I will relink it as well. So let's go back through um, and look at any questions that may be here. First off, though, Sheila Cushenberry. I want to thank you so very much for bringing that to my attention, which I saw it the other day as I was going through um, and doing some maintenance on the back end of our YouTube channel. But I was like, oh man, that's really cool. Didn't really think to. <laughs> but we did hit 35,000, 35,000 subscribers here on YouTube. And I am floored by that. It's just, it's amazing to me. So out of all of that sheer amazement and gratitude, I'm going to ring my bell for y'all because you guys are the ones that made up that 35,000. <laughs> yeah. Hoop group extraordinaire. We are awesome stuff. So thank y'all. So very much for being subscribers to our channel. If you're not a subscriber, go ahead and click join. We don't flood your timeline with a bunch of crazy mess and we don't um, have a lot of antics here. We just like teaching some good old fashioned embroidery and crafting and uh, sublimating and 
blinging and the whole nine. So that's what our channel is here for is to teach and get let you guys learn from my mistakes. <laughs> Um, so let's see, going back to the chat, Gail Whitaker says she uses heat and bond light. That is one option. Yes. Pamela Smith, can you use a child's glue stick, uh, stick glue to stuff from Walmart? I have heard that you can. I have used the glue stick myself. Now to hold this in place, uh, without using the spray adhesive, you, you probably can. It may take a little bit more because of how porous. Sometimes the fabric is, um, even though technically the glue isn't, like, I actually had issues out of this. And this is like Dollar Tree glue. So that could be why it doesn't really stick as well as I would like for it to. Um, but yes, from what I understand, you can. Just be careful and try not to put it in an area where your stitches are going to fall. Um, hello, Shonda Smiles Willis. How are you? Welcome. And thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Gail McNair, it's easier to trim when you take the hoop off the machine for extra room. It is. However, I was trying to keep it in the camera. Um, magnetic hoop, I won't know without actually looking at what machine that is and whether or not there is a magnetic hoop available for it. Um, that is going to take some research. What you can do is go on Amazon, type in magnetic embroidery hoop and see if one pulls up that goes with your model number. Nakomi says, I've downloaded the demo, been trying to figure that out as well. So it's safe to say you need the class. All right, we'll see um, about letting you all know when that um, actual recorded class is available. Are there left-handed applique scissors? Miss Pressure, I'm not sure on that. I'm pretty sure there are because there's other lefties out there. Um, but let, we'll do some research and see if we can find out for sure. Um, I don't see why there wouldn't be because again, other lefties, <laughs> I know this might be a silly question. Okay. So we address that and Gail McNair. Yes, there are left-handed applique scissors. Thank you, Gail McNair for that. Um, oops, I just missed something. Oh, oh, here it is. Did the file come, Andrea, did the file come with a printout? If it did, I heard it was useful to be able to cut the fabric ahead of time and for placement. Just wondering, Andrea, normally I would leave that to answer in the class, but I will say this. You can do that, um, but it can backfire sometimes. And I'll just leave it at that and save the rest for the class. Nikomi, one more question. Who did you say you bought your thread from? I went to the store online, but I didn't purchase at that time. Now I can't remember who it was. There's a couple of options, but right now for the cost of thread plus the cost of shipping, I'm going to refer you to MetroEMV.com. That's a lot of the embroidery thread that's on that machine back there. I do Madeira. Um, used to do Madeira all the time, but their shipping is not reasonable. So I don't want to refer you to there um, because the shipping makes the thread so much more expensive. This is Ashley. Hello, hello. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Applique was on the menu. And thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Yas. Um, let's see. Super, super awesome. Awesome, awesome. Going down, use extra fabric sewn on the side to make the fabric bigger to fit the hoop. Um, yeah, I can see where you would do that. I can see that. Um, Pamela Smith, can you use plain tissue paper sometimes? Are you speaking for the applique fabric? If you're speaking in regards to the applique fabric, I'm going to say no because the tissue paper is so super thin. It's kind of like that tearaway. See, the tearaway that I put on here was, this is actually a heavier weight tearaway and it just pulled right away from the embroidery where the stitches were. Like, as you see, it's not super easy to tear, just tearing it from the edge, but where the stitches were and where it's already cut, it's easy to tear right there. So tissue paper would be way worse, way thinner than this. Um, and 
usually applique, usually, usually applique is placed on garments that people wear. So if you put the tissue, it's going to come out in the wash um, and it won't last. So unless there's a way to treat it um, and make it reinforce some kind of which way, um, like for instance, we use lamination. Um, there's a how we did the candy bags, uh, candy wrappers, where we put that clear iron-on vinyl, clear vinyl over the top of it and use that to reinforce the candy bag so that we could sew them and make bags out of them. You might could use that with the tissue paper and then you would be able to use it. Um, Sierra Martin, hello, how are you? Welcome. <laughs> Colette says she rang her bell too. Thank y'all. I definitely, definitely, definitely appreciate it. Definitely pre appreciate it. Pamela Smith says she on a budget, girl. I understand. I understand. Clementina says she used heat and bond light as well. Gail, thank you. I appreciate it, fam. These are Warby Parkers. I love Warby Parker glasses. <laughs> um, I've always applied on my quilts with my sewing machine. This will be my first time on an embroidery machine. Thank you, Laverne Miller, for your congrats. And yes, embroidery a lot. A lot of quilters use applique on their quilts. So, yes, this is going to be awesome. So, social gal, um, how do you get rid of the excess fraying along the cuts? There's a couple of tips for that. Um, one being the most archaic would be to just go along with your trim scissors. Um, I left that pair over there, but I have so many pairs, it's crazy. And you can actually take the time to go along and trim that away. So as you see, let me go to a better side. Like right here. Sorry. Right in here you see those little stray threads and whatnot. And you take these little thin wispy scissors and you can go along and cut and trim closer and clean that up. That's one way. But I have a much faster tip that we will be discussing in the class all right so yeah there's a couple there's a couple of ways to I would say skin a cat but I like cats there's a couple of ways to skin a spider to de-silk a spider <laughs> all right so they can be it can be cleaned up fairly easily um let us see yeah but in order to get subscribers, you need to produce good content that people want to actually sit and watch. So you should ring the bell. For me. <laughs> Harmony, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. I sincerely appreciate that. Um, Ruby says, oh, you're welcome, Andrea. Ruby says, do you use a Brother uh, Pro 1000? No, but that is, I do have the 655. Pretty sure it's for PR650. It's PR655, and that's a six needle. It's not a 10 needle. Um, and that's further over. Um, and then the 15 needle is red line. Shirley Sewer, is it better to use heat and bond light for most applique or is it necessary? Mm, good question, Miss Shirley Sewer. Um, it depends. It depends. So necessary? No but it depends. There are many different options out there. Um, and a lot of it depends on what you're doing and the project you're working with. And we would go over all of that. Katrina says, what about needles? Needles uh, for applique, you can use just your regular embroidery needles. I tend to lean towards the 90s slash 14 needles. You can use 7511 or you can go uh, like I said, up to where I am with the 9014, there's also the 8012. Um, it just depends on the brand needle that you're using and what you're using it for. But my preference is the larger eye needle um, because I have less thread breaks with the larger eye needle than the regular small eye needle. So um, you can get, it's called a top stitch needle and you can get top stitch needle in the other sizes other than 9014. Alright, 
Um, what was the thread website? Again, that's metroemb.com. And I'll put it again. Metroemb.com. Their shipping is great. Reasonable. That's the keyword. Joy Mitchell just got an embroidery machine and I'm a little overwhelmed with my options. What are some good projects to start with and possibly sell? First off, Miss Joy Mitchell, there's something that we do right here on this here channel. And on this channel, we like to celebrate the new machines. So if you just got your embroidery machine, what machine did you get so that we can celebrate with you? Second of all, um, a lot of projects that I would recommend, I would need to know what size hoop you have with your machine, largest size hoop. So if you just got an embroidery machine and say it's the 4x4, then I can suggest these projects. But if you have the 5x7, for instance, embroidery machine, I can suggest even more. Or if you have a multi-needle like what's behind me, then the world's your oyster. So we'll have to recommend based on that. Hi, Gail Holt. How are you? You're welcome, Pamela Smith, Cindy McPeck. When I asked earlier about a list of stabilizers, I was referring to a list you had of different types and when to use them. There was supposed to be a link. Um, I don't have a link for that anymore. I don't have a link for that anymore. I need to get that set back up and we're in the process of streamlining all of that. So I'm sorry, Cindy, I misunderstood um, on your question, but I'm trying to think. Um, I have an alternative I can refer you to, but I do have my own, but we don't have it up anymore. So let's see if I can pull this up real quick, really quickly. Um, if, if I'm remembering them, if they have it actually. Yeah, so here's a link, but they don't have like a list list. What they have is you click on the fabric that you're going to use and the that will tell you what stabilizer you could use with that fabric, okay, or what they suggest. Um, some things, it depends, but it's a decent list I'll just put it that way so I wouldn't I wouldn't say that their list is wrong I'll put it there I'll, I'll say that um so Cindy McPeck I just put a link in the description you can click that and hopefully it will take you to um as I mentioned you know what fabric you're working with click on the type fabric you're working with and their recommendations will pull up what uh stabilizer to use you're welcome. Alex loves me. Harmony says, I love the colors from Metro. I haven't tested the sew out though, but so far really impressed for what you pay. Yes, they're very affordable. And the shipping again is reasonable. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. Um, Andrea says, there is also WSS and Tearaway tape made by RNK and another embroidery based company. Awesome stuff. Yes, tape can hold the fabric in place instead of using the glue. Uh, Sheila says she started with key fob small and doesn't use much material in sales. Well, yes, that's if you're doing, if she has the four by four. Yes, for sure. Key fobs are awesome designs by Little B, which I think that's in the list on this description below. Should be, because I usually keep her website in my links in the descriptions. Um, she has a ton of really cool projects that you can do with the embroidery machine, but truly the main thing I tell people to test a stitch out on and play around with your embroidery machine would be on a hand towel. Go grab an El Cheapo hand towel from Walmart. Um, I would say Dollar Tree, but they're, they're kind of wispy and thin, super thin. So get one from Walmart. The cheapest little hand towel they have, not the washcloth size, but like a hand towel. And just start on one end of that hand towel and embroider. You know, try it out. Use some tearaway stabilizer. 
um, and hoop that. And then if it messes up, if it doesn't turn out the way you want, it's okay. It's still a towel. You can still use it to clean with whatever you want to do. Um, and if you want to try again, all you got to do is flip it to the other side or start in the middle, move up a little bit and do in the middle and move up and so on. You got a whole towel to practice on and play with. Um, and it's kind of difficult to pucker a towel. Um, so that's why I usually suggest doing a hand towel and just have some fun with that. Um, let's all see. Best fabric for patches. Best fabric for patches is Tackle Twill. Um, I would suggest get the Tackle Twill from Ganold. Ganold.com. They sell it in several different colors. It's a it's affordable, but it comes in a really super long roll of um, material, and it's very sturdy, and it makes awesome backing for patches. So it's Tackle Twill, and that's at Ganold.com. Right, you can check under, I think it should be listed under stabilizers or something like that. I just got, Alexis Loves Me, just got the Husqvarna Viking MN1000. Well, congratulations, Alex Loves Me. Hello, yeah. <laughs> Viking MN1000. Yes, we're excited for you. So be sure to register here at thebabiesbooty.com so that you can post pictures of the projects that you've been working on. Um, you also can go on Facebook and register there as well if you would like and post there as well. Depending upon your preference, you can do either or, but I usually suggest going and registering both places because at thebabiesbooty.com, if I have your email address and I want to send out electronic file goodies, I will have your email address. So a lot of folks don't um, realize that capturing that email address for that type of stuff is totally awesome to them. I don't usually send out a lot of newsletters um, and spam emails. So, and I don't sell emails um, at all because I don't want anybody to sell mine. So it is there if you would like to, and you can share pictures there too. It's really cool. Do you know anyone that works with a Entrepreneur Pro 1000 just got it in April and a bit overwhelmed? Is there help you can get? One thing I will say now, okay, Ruby, the the interface, the keypad, um, the touch screen and stuff like that is there is a brother group. Um, actually, let me try and pull it up. There is a brother group that you can go to for that. But as far as hooping and stabilizers and stuff like that, again, usually the um, basics are all about the same, but let's go on Facebook and I'll tell you what group it is. It's brother something or other because it's all of the brother machines is in this group. So, um, brother, brother PE embroidery, I think it's the name of it. Let's see. Okay, so there is a Brother PE Embroidery Group. Okay, so look up Brother PE Embroidery. And if you have either one, the six needle or the 10 needle, you can get some assistance there. And hopefully somebody will be able to walk you through it there in that um, group if there's something in, in particular with the interface that you need some assistance with. Um, I just got a Innovis girl joy. It no matter you, you got an Innovis 1500D largest hoop. You have a six by ten girl. You got a good machine. Holler! <laughs> yeah, congratulations, girl. That's a nice juicy hoop. A lot of beginners who get embroidery machines don't get the six by ten. They can't. They don't usually get that big. So six by ten is really awesome. You have a lot of room to make some really awesome projects. You can even do like some in the hoop build projects as well. So um, what I would suggest, again, I'm still sticking to the towels. Still sticking to that because towels are really easy. You can make great gifts with those. So if you wanted to monogram some towels for somebody or for yourself, girl, get you, 
spice up your bathroom. Get you some monograms, put on some towels, or if you have kids or grandkids or, you know, nieces, nephews, put some little faces on their towels for them and their little names. Stuff like that is great practice. Towels are like super forgiving because like I said, you can always use a towel even if it's jacked up. Um, otherwise, there are a lot of um, embroidery projects out there. I have quite a few videos on some in the hoop embroidery projects. And if you click on the videos, you'll see what I mean when I say in the hoop. It's a project that's done completely in the hoop. Really cool stuff. Um, and beyond that, I say start with towels and get your feet wet. And then you can prowl our Facebook group and see some of the projects that other folks are working on. And that will help get you some ideas of some other stuff you may want to work on. Yep. So congratulations on your new baby, y'all. Um, you're welcome, Cindy McPeck. Let's see. Where do you suggest to get tear away? I would get my tear away. Well, you have the tin needle. You have the tin needle, so you have much bigger hoops. Um, so Metro EMB has larger uh, stabilizer now. So go Metro EMB and get you some tear away on the roll. And then you can roll it out to whatever size you need. Most of my stabilizer is by the roll. Um, it just makes life so much easier, especially it, because you have so many projects in so many different sizes. Instead of just buying, you know, pre-cut in one size that won't fit everything, um, the roll is just much handier. So try EMB, uh, MetroEMB.com. They do have stabilizer. Let's miss it. No worry, Miss Iris. Welcome. Thank you, Iris Diaz. So welcome. Pamela Smith can't remember if I registered or not. I know I did on Facebook. No worries. You can try again, um, and I will check and let you in. Can I open the door for you, girl? But I'll let you in. I would like to get the tiny poop bag purse to make Avery says the tiny poop bag purse is at badbobbin.com. Love, love, love that project. Matter of fact, Joy, that's a really cute project to work work on to and add it's this little teeny purse. It's so super cute. The only problem with the look, this is like one of the easiest projects out there to make in the hoop. But the problem is you have to get rivets. You have to get the little thingies to put on there. You have to get grommets as well. So and snaps to so it's more than just just strictly in the hoop. There's other parts to it. But snaps and grommets and rivets are definitely available at Hobby Lobby if you have one near you. They're also available usually on Amazon. Or even eBay. You can get those. Thank you, Miss Ruby. I appreciate it. Robin White says, on patches, do you match fabric with the background of embroidery? That depends, uh, Robin. That truly, truly depends. Because um, if I have a patch that is... Actually, it depends on what the customer wants. It depends on what the customer wants. So if it's a patch with a bunch of fill stitches to fill in, what I usually match with is the border more so than the background. Because your fill stitch is going to cover up whatever color your patch fabric is. So let me go ahead and grab a couple of examples for you. because I do love patches. Um, sometimes they can be a pain, but for the most part, I love patches. So like for instance, here's one um, to show you what I mean by matching the patch fabric to the border instead of the background. So here's a patch where I needed it to be the background. But the reason why I needed it to be the background is because this white, is the patch fabric. There are no fill stitches there at all, actually. 
So when I go to cut the patch out, you see I have, because I didn't, I didn't use the applique method. Applique can be used for patches too. Um, oh, I was supposed to answer that question as well. To whomever it was that asked about patches, um, can any design be made into a patch? I got you. Um, but I cut this out because I didn't do the pre-cut applique method as I was going into. And all I did was cut out around the patch. But you can see where the white from the applique fabric is around the border of the black. And in most instances, the customer really isn't necessarily going to see that. And there's a couple of ways to skin this cat to uh, help with that problem um, and fix that. There's a couple of ways to do that. But if I didn't want it to be that apparent and didn't want to have to do a lot of cleanup work after the embroidery is done, then I would use fabric to match the border. So the downside to that is I have to have fill stitches to make the background white. So this is black tackle twill fabric and the white is the whitest fill stitches, but you have to understand way less stitch count on this one because there that white, all that extra white thread isn't there, whereas it's here. But it covered up the black fabric. And so now when I cut it out, you can barely tell that I had to cut this out because the border is black and where I cut the fabric out is black. So it it masks the fact that I cut this out. So it depends on your customer. If your customer doesn't want a fill stitch, then you'll have to use the fabric to match the background. But if your customer is, like for instance, I'll say this is 40,000 40, stitches and this one was more like 15,000. So $40, if we're doing a dollar per thousand, $40 versus $15, which one is your customer going to want? You know, that that's what it boils down to. That's why I'm saying it's up to what your customer wants. Because if your customer is okay with paying 40 per patch, then yeah, go with it. It looks great. It's flawless. It's phenomenal. This is an excellent patch. This is a great patch too, but you can see the white around the outside. And so you have to do a lot of cleanup afterwards to help diminish uh, that white around the edge. Um... Let us see. Um, do you use... No, I do not, Myra. Um, I use So What Pro. And both of them are downloads. You can download... Um, to, to, uh, ah, what is it called? trial versions. You can download trial versions of both of them um, and try them out. Jackie Creeks, um, email me. Were you in the class? I think you were in the class. No, I don't think you were in the class. Oh my gosh. Am I going to have to do another So What Pro class, y'all? Am I really going to have to do another So What Pro? I tell you what, if you're in here and you need help with So What Pro, if you're in here and you need help with So What Pro, Shoot me an email, thebabiesbooty.com. There is someone else that really needed to take another Sew Pro class because she wasn't able to make it. I'll do one more class. One more Sew Pro class. So email me at thebabiesbooty at gmail.com and we'll schedule one more Sew Pro class. One more live and in color because it's fun it's a fun class now it's a heavy class so bring your notes and just be prepared but yes we'll do another so what pro class but email me email me hey yes i'm interested in the so what pro class so that i can get it scheduled i'm not gonna make it public i'm just gonna send it to the folks who want to ask to take the class and we'll send you the link um, but Myra, back to Myra with, now with Sew so Pro, 
you download the trial version and then when you're ready to purchase the program, you will get an unlock code emailed to you. So it unlocks the demo version and makes it the full version. I'm not sure about the other program. Gail says she got it from Walmart, a DVD. Had no idea. That's crazy. Had no idea Walmart was selling it. That's what's up, though. I ain't even mad. Um, thumbnail is a DVD too. Not in class. Oh, okay. Um, you oh you weren't in class. Okay, got you. Is the trial version okay for the class? Yes, yes, because eventually you will. If you're going to be in class, I'll add a couple of things in there for the trial version. But honestly, I have a video that works perfect for the trial version. I really do. And it's um, here on YouTube. So just do so a pro trial, baby's booty, and it should pull up. Do you use another needle for the patches? No. Same needle. I don't change. Thank you, Jackie Maddox. I appreciate that. I'm excited too. All right, you guys. So we are right here at two hours. And I'm going to take more Tylenol and go to bed. Well, I got to schedule a sew-up pro class first for those who email me. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you all again for the 35,000 subscribers. Y'all, I just, I really am eternally and humbly just floored by that. And, and it's just amazing that we have such a supportive group folks who look out for each other, folks who answer questions as well, because everyone in here, you know, is just phenomenal. You guys are awesome sauce. I really appreciate it. And with so much, you know, conflict going on and folks just crazy to come in and have some harmony and to have some peace. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. I definitely appreciate it. And thank you for keeping the groups drama free thank you for that i am so grateful <laughs> y'all just don't know you make life so much easier so i appreciate you guys taking your time to come and join us email is the baby's booty at gmail so this purple right here at the bottom of the screen the baby's booty at gmail.com you can email me there and I will get back in to you. You're welcome, Miss Robin. Please post a picture of the patch when you're done with it. I would love to see it. Um, so you guys definitely um, check us out on Facebook. Check us out on the website, thebabiesbooty.com. Um, and like I said, Shirley Stewart, honey, I hope everything goes well with your surgery Wednesday morning. Email me. Let me know how it goes afterwards, please, please. Would really appreciate that at the baby's booty at gmail let me know how it went so i know you're okay because if i don't get an email i'm going to email you i just need you to know that um so let me know and everyone else just thank you from the bottom of my heart and uh, like i said check us out on facebook check us out on our uh, thebabiesbooty.com and just for the heck of it you know what i'll go ahead and post the link uh, from on Facebook and on the babiesbooty.com for the class for so Pro. One more class. <laughs> I might end up just doing a monthly class. Who knows? I mean, so Pro is an awesome software program. Y'all just, ooh, just love it. Just love it. Love it to pieces. So you all are so very welcome. Um, I don't take it a lot, Pamela. I really don't. It, I have to be like really out of it, really, not out of it, but like really in pain to take anything. Actually, I hate taking medicine. So I don't take it a lot. So you don't, definitely don't have to worry about that. Um, but I enjoy doing applique with you all. That was awesome sauce. So again, if you're interested in learning all those deep, dark applique secrets that I love so much, sign up on our website. Sign up for the class. Y'all join in the class the class is unrestricted don't matter how many people is going to be in there it's going to be a webinar so it won't matter 
And the first, what did I say? First 50 people, I believe, the tickets are already set. So however many tickets, those special early bird tickets, get designs for free. The first, all as soon as them early bird tickets are sold out, that's it. Those are the people that are getting a free design. Um, but you guys are there. So I am so, oh my God, Miss Bickle, wake up. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. We enjoyed the class. We missed you, but hope you enjoy the replay, my love. We rang the bell so much. It's crazy. It, it's crazy. We did a good job ringing the bell tonight. So, all right, you guys have a great evening. I look forward to seeing you all again next Sunday, Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. And of course, of course, until the next time we see you, we want you to have happy embroidering. <laughs> you guys have a great night. Thank you for being here with me. And I look forward to seeing you all again. Bye. <laughs>